Have you ever met your hero? If so, were they what you expected? Mine yes. was. What about you? Absolutely. He, she was hero? amazing. It was Whitney. I uh, Whitney. Oh. It was Whitney. And um, I remember actually coming out of this hotel and I remember her ex-husband, Bobby Brown, came up to myself and the girls and he was like, oh my God, my wife loves y'all. And by the way, I'm just 16, 15, 16 year old oh girl. And so gosh. I said, your wife, your wife. Okay, so we go over and she was in an interview with this woman and it was for Out Magazine, I'll never forget it. And it was the first time we were mentioned with another artist in an article and she stopped the interview, sang to us, talked to us, it was like, oh, I'm gonna give y'all my number if y'all need anything, just hit me up. I'm Auntie Whitney, I'm Auntie Whitney. You ever need anything, I got you. Wow. Just the sweetest woman, a woman of her word. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it Would was- you call her? Of course we called her, for I sure. Called her and she called us and checked in with us and that was just amazing. Same thing happened with Janet. Janet was the, the exact oh, same Janet. way. Met Janet and no, Jackson. yes, and okay. when something was happening, I think it was we weren't supposed to travel because it was something crazy going on, like with airplanes and stuff, and she's like, I don't want you guys to fly today. I was like, Okay, we won't fly today. Whatever you say. Yeah. So it's 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 so awesome when you meet your hero. Who's your at 18, I experienced uh, the most tragic year of my life. And that is when I met Whitney in a different form. I think something resonated with her to see me in so much pain, to lose my grandmother, to lose my cousin, and to witness a suicide. That was just a lot. And that's when she really swept in like the fairy godmother that she always was to many of us. She came to a part of Georgia that most people dare not even ride through. She pulled up and she said, where's Monica? I know y'all know. Tell me where she is. Where's she, where she? Which one of these doors? And <laughs> by the time I get outside, I'm in shock. I never thought, she, she always called, always gave me words of advice and words to live by, but I wasn't expecting her to come to where I was. Not only did she come, but she came and she stayed for quite a while. And from 18 years old until the day she left, she's really been my mentor in, in music and in real life. But I recall the first time I got a chance to perform at Clive Davis's famous Grammy party, but I, I was so nervous. I was in the hallway. And then I heard somebody going, I have the faith that can move. It was like the intro for my first album, right? And that somebody was like, bitch, that's Whitney Houston. And she came up to me and I was like, oh my God, you know my, my like intro? Like, really? She was like, girl, you are bad. God bless you. Good luck. You know I'm from Jersey too. Boom, 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 boom. You know, she always was very friendly. Always came to sit at my table or in my area when we were somewhere together. But after Big Pass, Whitney really embraced me. Um, she just started kind of inviting me places. And I, you know, she just really obviously felt like, I don't know what she's going through, but she's going through something and she's having to live it in this business. You know what I'm saying? And she, we just immediately became really cool. Do you remember that day? How can I not for, remember that for, day? For everyone else, yes. this is the Arsenio Hall Show. Yes. And Whitney Houston was on the Arsenio Hall Show with BB and Cece, who were the guests. And Whitney was singing background. Background on Lost Without You. And she was singing background with us around the country. And Arista Records was losing their minds. Clive Davis was saying, you, you can't do that. Because, you know, uh, I want to dance with somebody was at number one, you know, and breaking records. And, and she said, bye, I'm going to sing background. And so she was on the bus with us and they were like, they're going to kill you. She said, that's good. I'm good. I'm oh, good. Wow. She was having such a ball. That particular, <laughs> we was laughing at each other because if you hear it, usually live elsewhere where we did it or on the record, it is much slower than that. Uh -huh. For some reason that night, when he introduced us, the band started that so fast. And we both, we all looked at each other <laughs> saying, oh my God, this is going so fast. But it was nothing you could do because it was live. And you had to go. We had to go. So voices crying and young people dying. <laughs> lost no way. We were cracking up as we were doing it. But 
we kept we we stayed professional. But when we finished that, we said, "Who? Where's the drummer? Who started that beat?" <laughs> it was unbelievable. But she was a sister in so many ways. You, you talk about the, the book. In the book, I let people know that the house, the first house I purchased, mm -hmm. the bank changed their minds because they felt like I was a risk. Musicians are a risk when it comes to buying things, you know. They really felt like you were black, but I ain't gonna go there. Probably that too. Yeah. So instead of the 10%, they wanted me to put down 50%, which I didn't have the 50%. Long story short, Whitney flew in and said, take me to that house that you was going by. I was like, why? And we went through it and she said, oh, this looks like your bathroom. Oh, this looks like my brother's kitchen. And we went to the side. She said, here. And she gave me an envelope. Open it up. And it was the 50% that was needed to put down on the house. She said, I told you this was your house. And I said, "Wow, girl, wow, girl, I'm going to pay you back. Right? Uh -huh. I paid her back. She found out I paid her back from her, her management, management and everything. And she called me and said, you just, you paid me back. I said, I told you I was going to pay you back. What are you talking about? She said, everybody say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I remember the first time I met her, she was like the first superstar I had ever met once I got in the business. And, uh, and I was just like, awestruck, huh? No, that's, that's what he said. Y'all know who that is, you know? <laughs> and, and, and when we first met her, she was just so sweet. She wasn't, you know, standoffish or anything. Like, she just made us feel like we had all known each other forever. And that surprised you about her? It did, because I didn't know any celebrities, you know. And, um, and meeting her, I was just like, wow. And then in my mind, I'm like, you know, we're going to be big, too. And I want to be like that, just humble. You know, I mean, and, and that's just how she, how she was. I, I can remember being on the set of the Rosie O'Donnell show and we were singing Heartbreak Hotel and we were in sound check. In between takes, I've been approached from a staff member from Arista Records who told me that it was disrespectful of me to, on Whitney's stage, try to outdo her. And so when we ran the song again, I scaled it all the way down and literally in the middle of the song, Whitney stopped and said, what's going on? Kelly, what's wrong with you? And I whispered in her ear, I said, well, somebody told me that I was doing too much and I kind of needed to pull back and I just don't want to be, who told you you're doing too much? Who told, I said, mm -mm. I want to know who told you, who told her? And, and Jeff told her. She told that individual from Arista Records that they were to leave, that they weren't welcome there, that she didn't appreciate them disrespecting me in that manner, that I was her guest. But not only was I her guest, but I was an artist and I deserved to be treated with the same level of respect that she was treated with. She was like, me? Don't you ever, <laughs> don't you ever. Well, you know, other than your family, I think one of the biggest thrills in your life was having the opportunity to meet Whitney Houston yeah, at the beginning of your career. Yeah. So what do you think she would think about how far you have come and the talent that you have become? I think she'd be very, very proud. I mean, I met her when I was very young singing doo -wop pop behind my sister. And, you know, she was like, who is that girl? Who is that girl? So she noticed you. Yeah, she noticed yeah. me. And, and then when I met her backstage, she was just like, wow, you're amazing. You can really, really sing. That girl, she, this is her. She's very animated. She used to be very animated like me. That girl got some pipes, honey. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really nice. Obviously, she recognized your talent back then. I mean, she was the greatest, and not only, and I said this um, when I made a press release about um, being asked to do this great honor of doing this tribute to her. Um, I mean, I was born listening to her out of the womb, and I mean, huge inspiration to every vocalist out there um, who wants to become a singer, but meeting her in person too, she was always so kind and so warm and she didn't have to be. And many times when you meet your idol, they're not that way. And I remember her being such a bright light also to me as an upcoming singer. And that meant everything to me. Um, so kind and so supportive. Um, but I guess when you're the greatest, <laughs> there's, you know, no, weirdness there and she was just that light on and off stage so i wanted tonight to be joyous and a celebration of her so i hope i did her proud <laughs> you know what this this question we got a lot for lil kim lil kim did you personally know whitney houston and what was your fondest moment of her 
Uh, I've met Whitney Houston numerous times, and it's so funny, I have a really funny moment. Um, one time, we were actually on the same plane going to the Bahamas together, and she was with Bobby, and their seats were like, in, you know, they weren't really together. Okay. So he was like, go sit next to little Kim. And so she sits down, and I'm like, yeah, come on, sit down, let's talk. And she looked at me at the side of her eye, and she said, I'm not really a talker. Oh. Right? So look, I said... Okay, but I had this little dog, and I had put the dog up in the top, and so she in was the, like... In the compartment? Yeah, because, well, they, they made me put the dog up there. Okay. They made me put... I didn't want to put her up there. And you know what? So Whitney said, didn't I see you coming with the dog? And I said, yeah. She said, where is she? I said, she said, no, she's not. And so the flight attendant was like, ma'am, can you take your seat? She, she was like, no, not until I get my doggy from up. Oh, and she put the dog on her lap. Oh, and they and let remember, Whitney keep it? They let Whitney keep the dog. <laughs> oh. And they let me keep the dog. Oh. So wait a minute, she turns to me. And, you know, remember she said she wasn't that much of a talker? By the time that flight was over, I was like this. Yeah, and she was like, yeah, and Kim, and you know. Oh. She was like, Kim, you sleep? I was like, no. <laughs> oh, that's but she sweet. was the best. She's still down to earth. Was the dog Love roaming her. free in the overhead, or was it in a carrying? No, she was in a carrying case. Carry, okay. Good. But, was, <laughs> so now Mike Epps here worked on Sparkle with the late Whitney Houston. Mm, yeah. uh, how was she on the set? You know, I, I, I have to say Whitney Houston was. Uh, I was real starstruck when I seen her. You know, um, and you know one of the craziest things that happened when I was on the set, she was like, I got to get a picture with you. And it blew my mind. I'm like, huh, a picture with me? She said, yes. My daughter, Bobby Christina, <laughs> I got in an argument with her because she kept asking, she kept telling me, you don't know everybody, mama. And I was like, I know everybody. And uh -huh. she said, you don't know Mike Epps? And she said, man, I know Mike Epps. I did a video with Mike Epps years ago. So I did a video with, with Bobby and Whitney years ago. Really? And, um, it was just, it was an honor to work with her. I, I'm just so glad that I got a chance to meet her and work with her. And she was such a joy. And her presence was so real. And, and just when she would come on the set, it would light everything up, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. I couldn't even. Um, I miss Whitney so much. I, no. I miss her. I miss her too, man. So I didn't want to do it, but I knew it was going to end up going in. I just remember um, being, you know, we stayed in the same building. So, you know, she would come up to my house, and I remember her hitting me one day and saying, I'm in your car. And so we friends, but at sometimes I, I'm still thinking, this is Whitney Houston. Right. She's like, I'm in your car downstairs, and I'm painting my toes <laughs> in your car. <laughs> so I'm laughing, thinking... <laughs> she just, you know, flogging. She she ain't in the car downstairs. So I didn't even run downstairs immediately. So about two hours later, I come downstairs and she and my Lamborghini, the door's up. And her foot, she got on one of my shell toe Adidas. And she is polishing her toes in my car. And I'm sitting there like, yo, this is Whitney Houston. <laughs> But she was just that touchable yes. and yes. so as big as she was, she was like family. Like she treated, she didn't you make didn't, you feel like you was Like she was Whitney her. and yeah, you, it, never you felt like she was your sister, your friend mm -hmm. or whatever. You, she just sat with you, talked yes. to you, kicked it with you. It wasn't, it, never, it didn't feel like you were talking to this gigantic celebrity. Right. I've been sitting here waiting for her since I got here. I'm like, where's Whitney? Where's Whitney? A 16-year-old Brandy barely able to contain herself. I just hope she's nice to me and, and, and she likes me. Knowing she'd soon share the stage at the 1995 Kids' Choice Awards with her hero, Whitney Houston. Hey, baby girl. <laughs> Only extra with this amazing video, the superstar surprising her biggest fan. Where are you going? Don't you start crying and carrying on and stuff. Come here with your little pretty self. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud. Yeah, oh, look at you. How you handling it, huh? It's cool. It's yeah. cool. Come on, let's go. Let's sit there. <laughs> I love you, Whitney Houston. Peace.